Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about uh, website performance optimization. And all that means is we're going to make your website load a little bit faster. At least we're going to try to. I'm just going to go over a few tips and tricks you can implement on your own website and see if you can make it load any faster. A faster website is a happier website. And the first thing I'm going to show you is a website that I rely on pretty much exclusively for my performance statistics when it comes to website speed and things like that. What we're going to do is go to our web browser and we're going to go to gtmetrics.com. Now on this website what we're going to do is type in the URL of our website or whatever website we want to analyze. And then this website is going to go through and check out our website for us, tell us uh, how good it's doing, how bad it's doing, and tell us what we can do to fix it. And it's pretty freaking awesome. So I'm going to type in the address of my website, awfulmedia.com, and I'm going to go up here and click Go. And it's going to go through this cool little animation that looks like it's going to be scanning your website. And they have little neat tips down here at the bottom you can read, and it's pretty helpful stuff. I've learned a couple things just from reading those little tips. And this should not take too long. I don't think their uh, their job queue is usually too long. To, uh, it depends on your location, though. And here we go. We have the statistics for my website. This is what I've been doing for the past week or so is optimizing my website for performance because I've, I was experiencing some pretty pretty slow speeds and it was really just disappointing and kind of depressing because I put all this work into the website and then it just it just bogs down so badly but uh, I've been using this website and it's helped out tremendously as you can see page load time 1.46 seconds now obviously it's not going to be 1.46 seconds for everyone uh, like if you're using dial-up or something something from years ago it's not going to be that quick obviously it's still going to be you know 30 40 seconds or whatever however long it takes you to download 545 kilobytes uh, also relying on my server speed and things like that now when I started out doing this I had like 60 requests HTTP requests and I've gotten that down to 38 and that's helped tremendously and what a request is an HTTP request is simply a call for something. It goes out and grabs something else off of the domain it's currently on. So like if you have an image that's in an image folder and you bring that image into your website, that uses a request. And every request takes a little bit of time to do. So you have to you have to kind of think about that. If I have 50 images, that's going to be 50 requests their browser has to make to bring in all those images. And that's going to slow down the load time a lot. So you have to consider that. So you have to consider page speed. And we're about to go over a lot more things you have to consider. And what's awesome is this website details all these things for us. And it's really, really, really descriptive. Well, at least descriptive enough for us to go from there. You can see I got a 96 and an 82. And there is a difference between these two. And they do analyze different things. And we're going to go over that right now. It says in here, okay, I'm in the page speed tab, and it recommends things I can do to make my website quicker, make it load faster. Obviously, at this point, I'm pretty happy with that, but sometimes I've seen three seconds and four seconds, and I'm not happy with that. So I could still do many things uh, to optimize the website. And the first thing here, it says the priority is high. Now, there's obviously change uh, depending on how you're rated in that. Like, if you have 100, it's not going to be at the top. The most important thing will be at the top. So this high, I got a D, a 60 in. That means I have I have a lot of room for improvement there, but it's not terrible. It's still a passing grade, somewhat. But I could uh, still improve on that. And if you click on it, it'll tell you how you can improve or what items need to be improved. And it'll even tell you what you need to do or what it what it means when it says this. So I have all these... Uh, all these images here that I need, need to uh, define height and width attributes for, as it says, right? Now, optimizing images. What it does is it runs an image optimizer 
on I'm pretty sure all the images that it requests and that way it knows that if there's any room I can save it will let me know that I'm not saving that room but I have potential to save this much uh, this much space so in this case it says if I was to compress this it would compress it 32% uh, so I would lose 32% of the file size saving 6.5 kilobytes and it even offers an optimized version you can download that but I don't use that I don't really know why I use a different website and I'll go over that here in a minute where you can optimize all of your PNG images just to make it that much smaller all it does is gets rid of metadata and crap like that that you don't need but it will it will not lose quality it does not mess with the quality of the image itself it just strips away all the stuff you don't need for website loading now I have an F here on the CSS selectors and that's because the CSS I'm using I'm, I'm actually using a theme for WordPress and I know you're like well you're, you're doing web design and you're using a theme somebody else made well yeah I am but uh, I just used it for the foundation and I'm kind of regretting it now that I actually did this this was before I knew WordPress uh, at all like I didn't know how to uh, do the WordPress backend system like, I understood the interfaces and stuff I mean the the writing WordPress themes I didn't understand that at the time and for some reason I did not want to take the time to learn it but if I had I would not be in this boat right now working with someone else's work now obviously the theme I'm using is no longer the same theme I just used uh, their theme and built my theme on top of it I just used their already pre-made uh, back end and uh, framework and things like that and this remove unused CSS all that means is that there there's CSS loaded on the page that I'm not using and that can be the case if you're using a LinkedIn style sheet for every page if you're using a universal header and it's going to bring in all of these styles that you have to find in the style sheet but that doesn't mean that one page is going to use all those styles. Like you can see here, I have a Nevo slider installed, uh, or CSS, because I have that option. If I, whenever I have the post that I want to uh, feature on the home page, I can turn on the featured content. I have that wrote in there just for that reason. Like if you were around during the advertising giveaway I did uh, a month ago, I believe, you would have noticed something like that on the home page at the time. But I commented that out. Uh, for so I can use it again in the future whenever I want to but it's still loading all the CSS that I'm not using at the moment but it gets used on some pages so I, I can either separate the pages and have it load on certain pages and not on other pages but that's just really the, the requests just not really worth uh, saving CSS that I'm not going to use on that one page that probably doesn't make any sense because I'm not good at explaining things like that but that's just an overview of how that works and obviously there's other important things on here too it's just let me hide this stuff I don't know what I'm doing all this stuff is important you don't want to look you don't want to overlook any of this stuff you want all this stuff to be as high as you can possibly get it like this minify JavaScript what does that mean if you don't know what that means you could be kind of confused so uh, I'm going to explain that quickly for you. All that does is it goes in and it uh, compresses your JavaScript. And when I say it goes in, I'm referring to a plugin or something you're using on WordPress. I'm not expecting uh, you to go into your JavaScript files, removing all your white space, removing all your uh, inappropriate spacings and things like that. No, but there's plugins for WordPress if you use WordPress. I'm sure there's plugins for other frameworks if you're using other frameworks so you can uh, go in that way and then the why slow now like I said this analyzes different things so it's like another perspective for you and more things you can do to improve the speed of your website like this one says make fewer HTTP requests and I th that was a low and that was like 20 when I started so I have uh, gotten that down pretty low and I'm pretty happy with that still not as good as it can be I still have 12 external JavaScripts uh, and that's that's not great 
That's what you get for using WordPress, though, whenever you're using third-party plugins. That's why I'm wanting to start and develop uh, my own plugins, because I do not want to use these plugins that produce all this garbage you, have, you can't really control without getting in the nasties. <laughs> we don't like the nasties. All this other stuff's kind of self-explanatory, except for the maybe the expires headers and the CDN. And obviously I have a zero on that because you're either using it or you're not. And I'm not using it because the website just cannot support the funds for that at the moment. There's just no way. The CDN is a, uh, it delivers content from an external server other than your, your web server that would be geologically closer to the person requesting that content. So like if you're from Japan, it would go to the Japan server and load that image instead of loading the server in America for the person from Japan. And the expires headers uh, controls caching in a user browser. So that's really important to do too. I've just not gotten around to it yet. I have made a lot of progress though. And I have rambled a long time just on this website, but I, I love this website. I contacted them uh, a couple days ago with an issue that I was having, and it was actually an issue on my end, but I wanted to make sure it wasn't on their end. It was inconsistent results, definitely very inconsistent results. I was getting away from 1.3 seconds to I hit 11 seconds on a load time one time, and I was like, that is just not acceptable for me at all. Like if one visitor was to have to load a page for 11 seconds whenever they're using super fast internet, they are not going to wait 11 seconds to load my website. So that's just not acceptable for my website. But I've gotten it straightened out. And you can compare it to another URL. Like if I was to compare my website to YouTube.com, they're probably going to be faster because they are YouTube. And, uh, you know, Google and all that's all about speed, performance, optimization. But we'll see how this goes here. I've done that once before and they definitely beat me. Because I loaded like four seconds, and they loaded it like uh, three point one or something. But we'll see this time how it goes. Oh, wow! That's, I'm actually getting consistent results, and that's very, very pleasing. One point forty six seconds for the my website that has all those images and things directly on the homepage. <sighs> that's nice. Ninety six eighty two. That went up, didn't it? That's weird. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I beat that, but obviously YouTube, you know, they have a pretty, uh, pretty full homepage, but, you know, whatever, I still beat them. <laughs> Alright, next thing I want to show you is a website called tinypng.org. There are a lot of alternatives for a PNG compressor, but I just, I just like this one. They all do the same thing, pretty much, but I just love this one's interface. And the cute little panda bear. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a PNG image. And you may recognize these if you've been to the website ever. And I'm going to just drag them up here. And it's going to compress... I am not going to drag this with it because they are JPEGs. And I'm on a PNG compressor. I'm not sure what my plan was there. Let's see if it, I don't know if I already compressed this one or not. It appears I probably did not. And that is a PNG file, so I don't look completely stupid trying to compress it. And there we go. It went from 135.4 kilobytes to 44.1 kilobytes, saving me 67% of my space. That's quite a bit. When you talk about doing that to all of your image, all of your images on the website, you're saving so much space. And you can just download it. No strings attached. They don't require any information or anything. And uh, you can see the comparisons here they've done. From a 57 kilobyte to a 17 kilobyte. And you just can't tell a difference. It's the exact same thing. So it's pretty awesome stuff. And uh, I really want you to check it out. Compress your PNG file. Do not forget that. That is an important step that I was not taking at first. And that's one of the main culprits for my slow website, load time. So be sure to check this out and be sure to do it.
So yeah, this video became a very lengthy video. I did not uh, intend for this video to be any more than like five minutes long. But when I start talking, I just talk, 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 talk. So yeah, be sure to check out gtmetrics.com and tinypng.org. That's all I have for this video. Please subscribe for more videos in the future. And, actually, I'm not quite done just yet. There's one more thing I want to show you. If we go to awfulmedia.com, I just released a, uh, a WordPress theme, my first WordPress theme that I have designed from the ground up. I used uh, my Respond website template using HTML5, CSS3, and the Bootstrap framework. It is free to download at the website. Please check it out. Put a lot of time into this. That's why I've been away for the past few days. But I've been putting all my time into this uh, into this theme here. And I'm actually kind of happy with it. I'm surprised that I actually built this like I did. It may look similar to the Respond template. That is because it is the Respond template. It's just the WordPress version. As you can see, I uh, I went with kind of the portfolio idea in mind. It does have a custom post type for portfolio, has a custom widget I created for portfolio, and uh, the footer is a uh, is not a widgetized area. It does bring in dynamic content though, premium categories, recent posts, and navigation. So yeah, please check it out. I'd love it if you could download it, leave me a comment on the website there, and let me know what you think about it. So yeah, thank you for watching. I think I am finally done talking in this video. I just cannot stop talking. It's been a while since I posted a video, so I wanted to kind of catch up on some stuff, but there's just not really anything to catch up on except that. So yeah, once again, I'll do a little outro for you. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe for more to come. Check out the website. Download the stuff I've got on there. I've got plenty of stuff to download so far. And I plan to release more. So subscribe. Uh, register on the website if you want to. Subscribe to the, the updates from awfulmedia.com right here. Uh, go to the Twitter page. It's awfulmedia, at awfulmedia. All that good stuff. Thanks for watching.